Hi guys, Matt from Haltech here, and one of the great things about tuning in volumetric efficiency mode is once the fuel system is set up correctly, the engine almost tunes itself. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today. So we've released a couple of really popular videos recently talking about volumetric efficiency, you know, what it is, how it works, and the advantages of an EFI system that uses a VE model for fuel delivery. If you haven't watched those videos, I suggest you circle back, check them out now, because they're really informative. If you don't have time to go back and watch those videos, here's the cliff notes. When tuning an engine in VE mode, the fuel map is actually mapping the amount of air going into the engine. The number that you see in the fuel map is typically between 50 and 100. This number represents how efficiently the engine fills with air at that particular load and RPM site in the map. So 80 in the VE map means the engine fills to 80% of its capacity at this load and RPM. Now the ECU then uses this calculated airflow rate along with the injector flow rate and the target air fuel ratio to determine how long to open the fuel injector to give you the air fuel ratio that you desire. So if all the correct information is loaded into the ECU for injector flow rate, fuel type, engine capacity, plus your MAP sensor and your intake air temp sensor are working correctly. When we measure the actual air fuel ratio in the exhaust, it should match the values that we put into the target air fuel ratio map. Now, if the target and the actual air fuel ratio don't match, the chances are the numbers that you put into the VE map aren't accurate for the particular load and RPM that you're operating in. So what do you do? Well, you tune the VE map, or in other words, you modify the base fuel map, which as I mentioned earlier, is actually an airflow map. Increase the number, you get more fuel. Decrease the number, you'll get less fuel. You do this for each cell in the map until the actual air fuel ratio matches your target air fuel ratio. All right, so that's the recap on our previous VE videos. If you skimmed over something or you want a deeper understanding of all of that, go back, Rewatch the more detailed two-part VE explanation series. It's really good. If you haven't seen it, do check it out. So getting back to this video, one of the most common observations from you guys from that VE series has been, well, if we're, all we're really doing is tuning the VE map by adjusting a number up or down based on the actual air fuel ratio versus the target air fuel ratio, can't we just tell the ECU to do this automatically and, and learn this information? Sort of like self-tuning? And the answer to that question is yes, you're spot on. When you add a wideband O2 sensor into the ECU, like you can on all of our Elite series and Nexus series ECUs, you can actually set up the ECU to apply these fuel corrections automatically. Some people call this auto-tune, others call it self-learning. The point is, it's all the same thing. In Haltech, we call it long-term and short-term fuel trims. So let's take a look at how to set this function up, uh, what it does, and exactly what all the settings do. So to turn on the O2 control in the Haltech NSP tuning software, we navigate to the fuel tuning section and turn on O2 control. Now you can also navigate to all of the tuning functions by pressing the F4 button and turn on the O2 control function from here. So this drop down box allows you to select which sensor you're going to use for your O2 control. And nine times out of 10, this will be the only sensor that you've got. So it's a simple decision. However, there are times when you might have more than one O2 sensor, in which case you'd select the configuration that suits your engine. Now in this case, we've got a straight six engine, but because it's got two exhaust manifolds with three and three cylinders on them, we're gonna actually select banked because I've got more than one O2 sensor. So the next setting in the software is the STFT enrichment and disenrichment. And this is where we need to understand how the O2 control system works in a more broad sense. Short term fuel trim can be thought of as an instantaneous adjustment because that's what it is, it's where the O2 sensor looks at the actual air fuel ratio, compares that to the target air fuel ratio, and if they're different, an immediate correction is made based on the difference between the target and the actual. So we call this immediate change the short-term fuel trim. However, this short-term fuel trim is just that. It's short-term. It doesn't get stored or saved anywhere. So no learning is applied. For the ECU to learn and save this information, we need to go down to the long-term fuel trim settings, which we're gonna do in just a moment, but first we're gonna talk about the least understood setting in the short-term fuel trim function, and that is the target oscillation amplitude. The default setting here is zero, 
which means if the ECU is targeting 14.7 to 1 FU ratio, then the O2 control system tries to maintain a steady 14.7 to 1. But if we were to put, say, one FU ratio point in here, then the target FU ratio is targeting 14.7 to 1, but the O2 control then tries to oscillate around that target by one FU ratio point. So the actual FU ratio goes from 13.7 up to 15.7 and oscillates around. Why on earth would you want the FU ratio to bounce around like this? Well, to achieve those near zero tailpipe emissions, we must use a catalytic converter. And the way a catalytic converter works is they're a bit like a sponge in that they require being filled and emptied, filled and emptied. And to do this, we have to supply them with an oscillating mixture of slightly lean, then slightly rich mixtures for them to work. That oscillation amplitude is what this setting is for. Now, if you're not familiar with tuning an engine to achieve a really high level of emission reductions, I'd recommend you just leave this value at zero. Now, the last thing you want is to be going down the racetrack at full noise and have the airflow ratio moving around all over the place because you've got the wrong setting in there. So for the ECU to actually learn or save any information about the required fuel trims, we've got to turn on the long-term fuel trim. So we've got some familiar settings here. LTFT or long-term fuel trim, maximum and minimum values. There's a minimum temperature under which the ECU won't apply any of this learning. And there's also this long-term fuel trim rich bias value. So this one may not be immediately obvious, but it's a bit of a safety factor. So the long-term O2 control will target and learn according to what values are in the target FU ratio map. However, if you put a value of say 3% here in this rich bias setting, then the O2 control learns in the long-term map to a value that is 3% rich of the target, and then it relies on the short-term trim to remove that extra 3%. Now the reasoning behind this is if the O2 sensor becomes unplugged or fails or anything like that, then the ECU will have learned 3% on the safe side. All right, enough talk. Let's fire up the engine and see how this function works in the real world. So what we're gonna look at here are the short-term fuel trim and the long-term fuel trim. And just to make it really obvious how this function is working, I'm going to set the entire VE map to 65%. Now, of course, I'd never do this in the real world, but to demonstrate how the ECU learning works, it actually makes a lot of sense to just look at it this way. When I start the engine up, we'll see the target FU ratio value here and the actual FU ratio value here. I'll bring up another couple of gauges that show us the long-term and the short-term fuel trims. And what we should see is the short-term trim get applied almost instantly as the O2 control kicks in, but this correction will then gradually wake its way from short term into long term, where it stays. So let's start the engine and we'll see it all in practice. So you might be wondering where the target air fuel ratio value or the target lambda value is coming from. So the ECU gets this information from here in the target lambda map. And as you can see, we don't get the same target lambda or AFR value for each load and RPM site. Now, if you want to check out our recent video on the effects of air-fuel ratio versus ignition timing, that tells you why this is the case. So we're going to give the engine a few revs, we'll pretend we're driving around a little bit, and then we'll be able to see the actual air-fuel ratio is trending pretty close to our target, even though I have this atrocious VE map of a single number of 65 in the whole thing. That's because the O2 control here is taking over and applying a lot of trim. I've simulated some driving around, I've gone up and down in the RPM range, and the ECU has learned that my VE map is terrible. But if you look over here in the actual VE map right now, it still says 65 everywhere. And that's because all of the learn corrections are actually learned over here in the long-term fuel trim map. Ah, so you can see over here in this map, the long-term fuel trim shows just how far out my VE map really was when the whole thing was set to 65. So all of these values, they're all still zero. Now, that's likely that way because I never actually entered that area of the map in my test drive. So the ECU couldn't learn anything in those regions. All right, so I can actually now apply these learned corrections to the base fuel map or to the VE map. And so to do that, I go back into the long-term fuel trim function setup and I hit the apply to base button. This is gonna zero out the long-term fuel trim map 
and update the base fuel map with all of the learned corrections. Now there's a couple of other control parameters that are worth mentioning here. The first one is this long-term fuel trim gain map. This map sets the speed at which the O2 control converts that instantaneous short-term trim into a long-term learned value. The bigger the number, the faster the learning. So the theory here is as an engine speed or engine load increases, there's enough reliable data to write to the long-term value as quickly as possible. At lower engine speeds and lower engine loads, you can end up chasing your tail if you write to the long-term trim too quickly. So you slow down the writing to long-term and allow the short-term instantaneous correction to do the bulk of the work and write the long-term correction a little bit slower. And that's why you see these smaller gain values in the low RPM and the light load areas of the map, and you see bigger numbers in the high load, high RPM areas. So as you can see demonstrated here today, using a Y-band O2 sensor and enabling the long-term fuel trim means, just like Stifler's mum, your tune-up only gets better with age. So if you enjoyed this video, ring the bell and subscribe to the channel for all the latest updates. Also, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or just roll it old school. Pick up the phone and call any of our five global offices. I'm Matt from Haltech, and I'll see you next time.